Hi everyone, my name is Miguel de Villa and I'm an applications engineer here at Go Engineer. Today I'll be showing you how to generate custom 3D textures for SolidWorks using Blender. The 3D texture feature was originally introduced in SolidWorks 2019 and it uses a grayscale height map like the one seen here in order to push and pull on the surface of the part in order to physically modify it and give you an STL. The end result is an STL with those textures in there as if you had physically modeled them yourself. And this is incredibly useful for applications such as 3D printing, where you can take advantage of printed textures directly onto the surface of your part. Now, for this, we'll be using SolidWorks 2020 as well as Blender 2.8. You can download Blender from the Blender website, it is free, and we are going to use it to take our processed STL and turn it into a grayscale image like what you just saw. Now taking a look at our model, it is made up of standard SolidWorks features, sweeps, extrudes, drafts and cutouts and so on, and there are a few good design rules to keep in mind. One, um, making it square square textures and appearances tend to be the easiest to work with and to apply and modify on any surface of your part. In addition, I've made several of the features such as these pipes and these extrusions line up with their opposite number on the other side so that as this texture is tiled on a much larger surface than on itself, all the ends of the texture will line up. And finally, take in mind the normalization of the height. To make a grayscale height map, Blender will take a look at the highest portion of your part, in this case this circular extrusion, and make it one end of the spectrum in comparison to the lower portions and sections of your part. So that will determine the overall height that will be used when we finally go into the 3D texture tool. Now, before we get started into Blender, let's go ahead and turn this into an STL. I'll just hit Save As right here. Hit Save As STL. And one final thing to keep in note are your STL export options, which you can modify right over here. By selecting this option, we can directly go to our export options inside of SolidWorks, and we can go ahead and select um, one of the presets. In this case, Fine typically tends to work, though you can increase the resolution of the STL. What you want to make sure of is that you have enough triangles being captured so that you can adequately see all the features on your part. And it looks like based on this, I do. I could go higher if I wanted. Now that I have turned this into an STL, let's quickly hop over into Blender and take a look at what settings we need to change. So now we're over here in Blender with a brand new Blender project and first thing right off the bat we're going to go ahead and delete the default camera, the default cube right here, as well as the default light. We won't be needing these as we will be making our own. To start things off you go to File, Import, STL. We are going to go ahead and select the pipe STL that we previously made and our goal here is to start positioning it um, correctly. I'm going to lay this down flat on its back so I'm going to go ahead and select the pipe right here then there's an extra little button right over here which opens up the transform menu and I'm going to rot rotate this so that it is nicely oriented so I'm gonna quickly add in some values right here there we go that looks good and now to um, add some displacements. It's a 10 by 10 millimeter square and I want to try as much as possible to get it dead center in my screen. That way I, when I create a camera pointed directly over the top like this it'll already be perfectly positioned. Fantastic. Now let's go ahead and add a brand new camera. You can hold down shift then A to open up the add menu and go ahead and select camera. This will add a new default camera at the origin and just like before we're going to select the camera and add some rotation as well as translation. I'm actually going to reset the rotations down to zero and add the translations to be just ever so slightly 
above my part itself, like so, as you can see by this little icon. Now, we need to enlarge the camera somewhat, as well as manipulate a few particular settings. Let's go ahead and select camera again. Then we're going to go over here to the properties of this camera. Click on this little camera icon. We're going to change under lens the type of camera from perspective to orthographic. In addition, we need to change the orthographic scale to match the overall size of our part. It was a 10 by 10 millimeter part, so I'm going to change my orthographic scale to 10. One final thing that should be mentioned is the clipping distance. The clipping determines um, the, essentially the field of view. How close to the camera and how far away is it going to capture an image. As you can see, my clipping is very small. I'll even change it to zero, as close as it will go. And clipping of a thousand is more than enough to capture the depth, which is really just around five. Now, let's go to the scene settings right here, the render properties. And we are going to go ahead and change color management down here at the bottom from sRGB. We're going to change it over to none. This way, there is no color correction being added to our final render, and it will purely be a grayscale height map. No other corrections applied. Then we're going to go over here to Output Properties, and we are going to change the resolution of the image. I'm going to go with a 512 with, by 512 pixel sized image. You can see the change here in the camera icon, now it looks like it's properly capturing the entirety of our part. 512 by 512 is a pretty modest resolution. You can go higher if you want. The important thing is that it is in fact a square, as it, that will make it easiest to tile. Now to test and make sure that our camera is fully capturing our model, let's go ahead and select it here. And then we can click on this icon, toggle the camera view to switch to it. And as you can see, I am fully positioned right above my camera, I'm perfectly capturing all four corners completely. And this is excellent. Now, right down here under output, we could also change this later, but I'm going to change the color to black and white for saving it as a grayscale image. I'll select a default color depth of eight as well as a compression. Let me change that down to zero, change that little slider. Now, before we can actually render this out, we need to go ahead and composite it right here on the compositing tab in the upper middle portion of the screen. Most important is to select this option called Use Nodes. This will give us two icons. Over there on the left, that is our starting image, and over here on the right is our final one. Let's go ahead and add some additional nodes to transform the image from a depth to a grayscale. Let's go ahead and hit Shift A. This will open up a search right up here at the top and you need to type in normalize. This will convert the physical height or depth of the part, however you would like to call it, into actual color values. Now to complete this, you have to click and drag from depth right here. I'm going to click and drag it to the input of normalize which will then output it over here in the composite section. Now, we can test out this render by going to the Render tab and selecting Render Image. And you can see right off the bat, we have a pretty good idea of what this part will look like. The lowest sections are in white and the highest are in black. Now, by default, SolidWorks assumes the opposite, that the white sections are the highest and the black are the lowest. We can change this around when we actually apply the 3D texture, but to make it easier to use, we're going to go ahead and invert the black and white color scheme. Let's go ahead, go back to the compositing tab. Let's go ahead and hit Shift A, and we are going to search for invert. We'll go ahead and add this invert node right down here in the middle. See how it's highlighting on that little path between the two nodes. And there we go. That flips the images so that white is the highest and black is the lowest. Again, we can go and take a look at our render for an accurate preview. And this is it. This is perfect. As we can see, the bit large flat section right up top is perfectly flat and therefore the highest, clearest section. 
and on the circular portions of those pipes, you can see a gradual gradient as it goes from white down all the way down to black. Now, let's go ahead and select image right here and hit save. I'm gonna save this in a custom folder called custom 3D textures, which I'm going to point SolidWorks to. And I'll go ahead and save this as pipe texture or custom texture in this case. You name it, whatever you like. I'll go ahead and save that image. Overwrite the one from earlier. And there we go. Now we can go back to SolidWorks and actually test this texture that we've just made. Now we're back in SolidWorks and here I have a very basic solid of a slightly curved shape onto which I'm going to apply our textures. Now, to apply that texture, you select the Appearances, Scenes, and Decals tab right here in the Task pane. By default, it will show the Appearances, Scenes, and Decals. We're gonna go ahead and open up Appearances. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll find your Custom Textures folder. If you haven't added a Custom Textures folder before, you can very easily do so by selecting the Appearances tab right here, hitting add file location, and all you need to do is browse to where that folder is, just like so, and it will be added. Now go ahead and sele select this folder. If you haven't previously and you've added new textures to it, you can absolutely go ahead and hit refresh to refresh and have it look into that file, and now I have the custom texture right here. All I need to do is simply drag and drop this into place. I'll drop it onto this left hand face right here and I'll go ahead and select the face itself to start with. Now the reason I'm doing this is so I can show you where you go to edit the appearances of your part. Appearances can be found on the appearances manager over here in the top left of the very top of your feature tree. Selecting this will allow you to take a look at the appearances, scenes, and decals that you've applied to this part. The leftmost option right over here is called View Appearances, and here you will see the textures that you have applied across your entire part and across multiple faces and features. I'll go ahead and right click, hit Edit Appearance, and this will give me the ability to, under Selected Geometry, add an additional face to the selection, just like so. If my texture did not map appropriately, it was slightly rotated or it's projecting in a weird way, I can very easily reposition it using this icon right here. I can grab the edges to change to size it bigger or smaller, as well as click in that box to reposition it, preferably such that any significant features aren't cut off. Just like so. Now to make sure that I have a fairly good resolution, I'll go ahead and size this so that I can see four complete icons right off the bat. And now I'll go ahead and take a look at the mapping option. If you would like to change how this is mapped or being projected onto a surface, you can absolutely select the mapping styles right here and gain even more options by selecting the advanced option at the very top. This seems good for now, so I'll go ahead and hit OK. Now that I have this texture fully applied, all that remains is to convert it. Let's go back to our feature tree, specifically the solid bodies folder over here in the top left. I'll right click on my solid body and in the toolbar we have the option 3D texture. This will begin us as a 3D texture with an option for every single face that we have. So I'll go ahead and select both right here and I'll start with the one on the left. I'll go ahead and select a texture offset distance of about one millimeter to start with. And right off the bat, you can see that it's already changing the surface of the part. Now, to capture those fine details, we will need to increase the element size right here. The smaller triangles it uses, so-called element size, the overall smaller uh, features it will be able to recognize and adhere to. We can also apply texture refinement so that in areas that are flat, it doesn't use many triangles at all. And in areas where there is a high amount of change, 
it can go ahead and subdivide the size of the, those triangles to use smaller elements like so. And it'll be a careful balance of these two factors to give you the best results. The more refined your mesh is, the longer it will take to generate and the more complex the overall STL will be. So I will go ahead and select a modest amount of refinement as well as offset distance for both faces of my part. A good guideline for the maximum element size is keeping in mind the smallest size of the feature. If the smallest size of my feature was about half a millimeter, then I definitely want to go to at least that much. Let's take a look. And now I have a pretty good resolution of even that logo. And that's small enough that it won't be noticeable when I actually print this out on a 3D printer. Now I'll go ahead and hit check right here. Let it complete the command. And as you've already noticed, the more complex the model is, the longer it will take to rotate, manipulate, and essentially navigate the interface. To mitigate this somewhat, you can set your display style to simply shaded and this will often make it run much more smoothly. And this has turned our 3D texture into a SolidWorks graphics body as we can see right here. Now with the graphics body shown and the solid body it was based on hidden in the background, we can go ahead and hit save as in order to save this out as a completed STL which we can then load into our printer and watch the texture complete. And there we go. Thank you for staying tuned to this quick tip. My name has been Miguel de Villa. Thank you all very much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.